The 90s are back as the Sanderson sisters return in Hocus Pocus 2. I guess I'll take it since, you know, I'm never going to get Ernest scared stupider. Know what I mean? This review is brought to you by Mint Mobile. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash Merle and stay tuned after this review for more info. Hello everybody, I'm Dan Merle here with my review of the long-awaited sequel to Hocus Pocus, aptly titled Hocus Pocus 2. Before I get into that though, I want to just take a quick moment to recognize what is unfolding in the state of Florida. I wear a Florida State hat nearly every episode. I went to college in Florida. Mara and I were just in Orlando last week at this time. Orlando right now as I'm recording this is getting hammered by Hurricane Ian and the morning is sure to reveal some catastrophic damage. I will be putting a link down in the description below to the Red Cross if you'd like to donate that way. I know that's not everyone's organization of choice, so I would encourage you to seek out an organization that is providing hurricane relief for Ian because there are going to be many, many people in the state of Florida in need. Let's turn now to Hocus Pocus 2, which is a sequel to the film from 1993. This one's directed by Anne Fletcher, who directed movies including Step Up, 27 Dresses, and The Proposal, with a script from first-time feature screenwriter Jen D'Angelo. And let me say right off that the first Hocus Pocus movie came out in 1993. I was 10 years old, so I should be in the target demographic for that movie. So many people my age love Hocus Pocus. They see it every Halloween. I was not a fan of that movie, not because I didn't like it, but because I was raised in the American South in the early 1990s during the quote-unquote satanic panic that started in the 1980s, so I was not actually allowed to watch things that had witches in them, or at least that were specifically centered around witches when I was 10 years old. So I did not grow up with this overriding love of Hocus Pocus. I didn't even see the movie until a few years ago when I was well into my 30s. All of this is to say that I did not come into this movie with the well of nostalgia that I think so many people are going to have, and yet I found myself enjoying this movie particularly as it went on. These revival sequels have a spotty track record at best. Sometimes they hit, but it seems like more often than not, they're just empty attempted revivals of some magic that had been captured decades ago, and these movies really are just proof that you can't recapture that same magic. But I really didn't think this is the case with Hocus Pocus 2. I thought that this was an enjoyable film. I think that fans of the original will really like it, but maybe they'll really hate it. I, I can't really judge these things. Every time that I think that fans of an original thing are going to like the new thing that I'm not familiar with, then they hate it and vice versa. So maybe all the stuff that I found refreshing or some of the references that I found clever, fans of the original Hocus Pocus won't like. But all I can say is that I did like this movie, having seen the first one, although not being overly familiar with it. Bette Midler, Kathy Najimy, and Sarah Jessica Parker return as the Sanderson sisters, the trio of witches who were last banished from Salem, Massachusetts 29 years ago in the events from the first film. Whitney Peake, who's been in the revival of Gossip Girl as well as Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, plays Becca, a Salem resident whose interest in the town's history inadvertently leads to the return of the witchy trio. Belissa Escobedo and Lilia Buckingham play Becca's best friends. We're not, we're not teenagers. No, we only look young. But, huh? but really, we're 40? 40? Oh, 40. Very old folks, huh? Fine position. I must I say, so quiet. Really, they're, they're aged. <laughs> Tony Hale also appears as the town's mayor, delivering the Tony Haleness that you would probably expect. I think Tony Hale is funny in general, so I enjoyed him in this movie, but your mileage may vary depending on your opinion of, well, Tony Hale. Sam Richardson also appears as Gilbert, the owner of a magic and occult shop who's forced to help the sisters attempt a spell called Magica Maxima, which they believe will free them from the bonds of the curse that only allows them to return when the black flame is lit on Halloween night. And while the movie isn't especially heavy on legacy characters, there are also some familiar faces that pop up over the course of the movie. But one of the things that I actually liked about this film is it's not just an attempt to recreate the first movie. Yes, you have references and some beats that are callbacks to the original Hocus Pocus, but this movie is also trying to be its own movie in many ways, including some revelations as far as the backstory of the Sanderson sisters that actually inform them as characters. 
But there are also some familiar things. There are a couple of musical numbers because when you have a talent like Bette Midler, you're going to let her do everything that she can do. There's one rendition in particular that I think, if it's released as its own single, is going to be a fixture on Halloween playlists for years to come. We also get a healthy dose of fish out of water comedy with the Sanderson sisters. Some of it works better than others, but I think what this movie really has going for it and what the first movie also had going for it is the talent and the charisma of the three lead actors, Bette Midler, Kathina Jimmy, and Sarah Jessica Parker. We must fly to our ancestral cottage, get book, and brew our potion. Then what, Winnie, then what? Then we run amok in Salem. There is no retroactive recasting of the witches as heroes in this movie. They are unquestionably, again, the antagonists, but you like these three characters because they interact well with each other, and they have this devious, ghoulish, and often dark charm to them. And as in the last movie, Kathy to Jimmy's childlike wonder and Sarah Jessica Parker's cluelessness as Mary and Sarah Sanderson complement Midler extremely well. They are the seasoning in the Winifred stew. The movie also takes time to go into the relationships between the different sisters, and Midler gets a few chances to actually stretch those acting muscles beyond just the kind of cackling Winifred Witch character. We actually see how much she cares for her sisters, despite the fact that they are at each other's throats more often than not. While Hocus Pocus 2 wasn't a movie I was on the edge of my seat anxiously awaiting, I have to say I generally enjoyed it, and I really felt that it gathered momentum as it went on. There was one early trip to a Walgreens in the first act that tested my patience because the jokes really began to wear thin, but I think this ultimately is a sequel with a purpose that, yes, is here to give fans of the first Hocus Pocus movie a healthy dose of nostalgia, but is also there to stand on its own two legs. I think the movie gives us new insight to the characters, and I think that it is a worthy companion piece to the original film. So it's a recommendation for me on Hocus Pocus 2, and I think that there are going to be a lot of people that are going to be watching both movies over the upcoming Halloween season. Are you one of those people? Have you been waiting for this movie for 29 years? Let me know down in the comments below. And before I go, I want to thank the sponsor for this review, Mint Mobile. How many times has one of the big wireless providers offered you an incredible deal only for you to find out later that there's a catch? Yeah, like every time, right? So when I heard that Mint Mobile was offering pre premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. That's the first thing that I thought as well. What's the catch? Well, it turns out there's not one. Mint Mobile's secret is that they're the first company to sell wireless service online only. That means they cut the cost of retail stores and pass those sweet savings directly to you. For anyone who hates their phone bill and who doesn't, right? Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just 15 bucks a month. And Mint Mobile gives you the best rate whether you're buying for one or a family. And at Mint Mobile, families start at two lines. All plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network, and you can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all of your existing contacts. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash Merle. That's mintmobile.com slash Merle to cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash Merle. Thanks to Mint Mobile for sponsoring this review, and thank you for watching. I'll be back very soon with more movie reviews, news, box office, and more. Until then, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.